For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. the beginning of a new year. 1948 has slipped into the past, and yet, thanks to my roommate, Irma Peterson, I will remember it as long as I live. For it was in 1948 that Irma did the following memorable things. A, she bought a refrigerator without a motor because she felt that without any moving parts, there was nothing to go out of order. <laughs> B, it was in 1948 that she gently took my new sealskin coat and put it in the bottom of the bathtub while she poured water and ice over it because it was Be Kind to Animals Week. <laughs> and see, it was also in 1948 when Irma's boss, Mr. Clyde, told her he wished to speak to a client in Dallas, Texas, person to person. So Irma wired him the fare for a round trip ticket. <laughs> That was all in 1948. 49 is starting out even worse. Why? Because Irma has at long last broken off with Al. And day and night for the past three days, America's number one fugitive from an honest buck <laughs> has been bombarding his chicken with various notes and tokens of his love. On Friday, it was a letter a letter which went... Dear Chicken, I cannot understand how you could break up our romance after all we've gone through. We used to count on each other so much. Now that you've left me, I can no longer eat. I go without breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Don't cry, honey. It's not your fault. Yes, it is. He used to count on me for those things. <laughs> I do not wish to cause you undue alarm. But unless you take me back, I will throw myself under the wheels of a subway train from the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> and on the way down, I will stab myself several times, fatally. <laughs> and if that don't work, I will take poison. And if nothing happens by the time I hit the ground, we'll do something desperate. <laughs> He's figured more angles than a four-way coal tablet. It's too bad things have to come to this sudden end just when I thought of a real money-making plan. Oh, no. Yes, a plan that would make us rich. It's a special weight recorder for wives who are suspicious of their husbands. A device which can be attached to the husband's chair at the office. When his secretary sits on his lap, the additional weight is recorded, and the wife has got him with the goods. <laughs> so you see, Chicken, unless you have a change of heart, the world will lose a great mind. Adios. Al. That was Friday. Early Saturday morning, a single lily was delivered to Irma. A lily which I am quite certain I saw clasped between folded hands in the window display of Hawker's Mortuary. <laughs> and on the card, tenderly inscribed, were these immortal words. Dear Chicken, I sent you this single lily because the hands that last held them were as cold as your heart. <laughs> Desperately, Al So much for Saturday On Sunday, sheer grief gives way to determination In the form of a love poem A work of deathless art Dear Chicken Like a little squirrel needs his nut I must have you and no one but <laughs> Enough to tear your heart out, isn't it? But all this hasn't made the least impression on Irma. She's completely wrapped up in thoughts of her new boyfriend, Melvin Baxter. Uh, Jane. What, Irma? What do you really think of Melvin? Well, from what I've seen of him, he strikes me as being reliable, ambitious, and sincere. 
I suppose you're right, but I can't see where he's so reliable. What do you mean? We've been out together four times and he hasn't even kissed me once. <laughs> well, maybe he's a bit bashful. Gee, Al was different. He kissed me four times before we were introduced. <laughs> <laughs> Irma, you sound as if you're still a little sweet on Al Oh, no, Al is a forgotten chapter uh, Since I've been going places with Melvin, life is just a new thrill You don't know what it means to a girl to go on a subway with a man and have him pay your fare <laughs> I have lived a little, too And Melvin is so considerate Look, honey, sweet. you can tell me all about it while we walk down to the beauty parlor, huh? All right, Jane, let's go. Now, what were you saying about... Me oh, look, Irma, there's another letter in the mailbox. And I think it's from Guess Who. Well, let me see. Well, read it while we walk, huh? All right. Dear Chicken, you have refused to see me. Well, let me warn you. If you are thinking of marrying another man... Do not waste time learning to cook for him since he will be on a liquid diet because I will knock out all his teeth. <laughs> Devotedly, Al. Oh, gee, gee, Jane, this is terrible. Why? I have just given Melvin a tube of Pepsi it for Christmas. <laughs> Irma, watch where you're going. You'll trip over that man tying his shoelaces. Oh, oh, it's Professor Kropotkin and Mrs. O'Reilly. Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little darlings. Oh, girls, I'm so glad to see you. The professor here has been trying to tell me my hair is natural red. <laughs> of course it is, Professor. I was with her when she bought it. It said natural red on the box. <laughs> Irma. That was me hair net. Well, what's the difference? Professor, I'm surprised at you. I thought the two of you had made up over the holidays. Not a chance. Not after last night. I went into my room, and I thought Mrs. O'Reilly had given me a beautiful crystal chandelier. But when I turned on my gas heater, I was almost killed. How come? <laughs> the icicles melted and came down on my head. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, yes. And when I complain to Mrs. O'Reilly, she says I have an advantage none of her other tenants have. In my room, I can never get lost because when I lie in bed, I can see the North Star through the ceiling. <laughs> oh, you and your beefing. You almost made me forget to give Jane Richard's message. Oh, did, did Richard call me? Yes, Janie. Just go inside and use my phone. Oh, thanks. Wait for me, Irma. Tell me, Irma, how's the new romance with Melwood? Oh, he's so sweet and kind, and I know he likes me because he broke off with his girl, Myrtle. Myrtle? Yes, and I'm proud because that's the test of a man's devotion. Indeed it is. When my poor departed Clancy met me, he was going with another girl, but he broke off with her. I understood she felt terrible. But she got over it very quickly and married Julius Caesar. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> I saw the picture. Julius Caesar is married to Vivian Lee. <laughs> well, come on, Irma. I've got to hurry. Aha, uh -huh. must be a big date. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, girls. Be careful, Mrs. O'Reilly. You'll fall into that ash can and they don't collect it till Wednesday. <laughs> oh, not so fast, Jane. You'll get to the beauty pie. Well, I don't want to be late. Richard is taking me out tonight, and you and Melvin are invited. Gosh, how did this happen? Well, he just explained that one of his clients is in some sort of scandal, and while Richard isn't involved directly, he doesn't want to be any place where he can be pestered by reporters. You know how he hates publicity. Oh, of course, I understand. So the four of us will go to some nice, quiet place. Oh, here's the beauty parlor. You coming in, Irma? No, I just want to walk through the slush and think of Melvin. <laughs> well, I I'll see you later, honey. I'm in the mood for love simply because. Chicken! You're, simply because. Chicken! You're, if you don't go away and let me finish this song, I'll call an officer. Now, listen to me, chicken. You don't know what this separation has meant to me. I lay in bed at night thinking of you, and 
My heart beats a savage tattoo. I'm sorry, Al, but having pictures on your chest isn't going to make any difference to me. Oh, please, chicken. Haven't I given you the best years of my life? Al, ever since I've known you, you've been in the unemployment line. Well, those are my best years. <laughs> Look, chicken, I can't take any more of this. My whole life is all mixed up. I'm so confused, I, I, I put my hand in the wrong pocket this morning when I went to make a phone call. What do you mean? Use the nickel instead of a slug. <laughs> Chicken, I'm, I'm disintegrating right in front of your eyes. Oh, please, Hal, not in front of strangers. <laughs> it's all over between us. I love Melvin. Uh, Melvin, that's the guy that's been poisoning your mind against me with his fanatical talk about working. You leave Melvin out of this. Please, Chicken, how can you do this? After all, we were inseparable, like Trilby and Svengali, and Damon and Pythias. Oh, Al, you're talking about cities I haven't even been to. <laughs> it's no use, Al. I want Melvin. Chicken, if I can't have you, no one will. Al, if you don't stop talking like that, I'll call a policeman. Now go. Okay, I'll go. But I warn you, if that Melvin comes to see you tonight, you better tell him to wear a football helmet. Because I'm going to kick him right in the end zone. Well, hello, sweetie. Well, Irma, what's wrong? You look all upset. Oh, it's nothing. Uh, besides, when Richard gets here, everything will be all right. Richard? What do you mean? Oh, when the policeman comes, he can be a witness. Policeman? Witness? Irma, what are you driving at? Oh, I ran into Al on the street, and he's coming over tonight to murder Melvin. Oh, no. And Richard doesn't want publicity. Irma Peterson, why do you always have to get mixed up in these things? Oh, I don't know, Jane. I guess I'm just a good mixer. <laughs> Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film on your teeth, and you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film. Brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Well, I am just about beside myself with anger. Richard, who is purposely taking me out tonight to some out-of-the-way place to avoid publicity, is about to walk into a homicidal spotlight. And Irma is completely unconcerned. She is lost in her dream world. How do I know? Because she's putting mascara on her fingernails and nail polish on her eyelashes. <laughs> Irma. Oh, what is it, Jane? Oh, look what I did to my nails. Look, honey, I'll make excuses for the fact that you think you're in love, but I refuse to let your love affairs come between Richard and myself. Oh, Jane, I, I don't think I will start a fight with my new, new boyfriend, Melvin, when we go out tonight. But he's liable to. The four of us are going out, and if there's a fight, Richard is going to be standing right there when the police arrive. So what? He can just say he was watching in self-defense. <laughs> Irma, don't be ridiculous. And now, look, sweetie, you've got to go down to the corner and tell Al to be a gentleman. Well, well, what shall I tell him? Just say you have no respect for men who use brute force and resort to violence, and you insist he leave Melvin alone. Now, can you remember that? I think so. Let's hear it once to make sure. All right, I, I have no respect for men because I'm going to res resort with a brute if I have to use <laughs> violence. <laughs> no, 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 Irma. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'd better 
go down myself. Jean, believe me, I will never start a fight. <laughs> well, what makes you so sure? Well, because fighting is too much like work. And that's enough to make Al sick. <laughs> Say, you've got something there. I never thought of it that way. Oh, certainly, Jane. This is going to be a quiet evening. Well, now, now I'm relieved. Oh, Richard will be here any minute. I'd better start dressing. Oh, Jane. Yes, sweetie. Uh, you don't have to be afraid to wear your new evening gown when you go out with Richard tonight because I fixed it. Oh, that's nice. What? You fixed it? Yes, I didn't want you to catch cold, so I patched up the front and the back. Irma! <laughs> Irma, that's the new neckline. Where is it? Oh, well, thank goodness you sewed it by hand. I can get these stitches out without too much trouble. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane, but in this weather, I thought... Uh, you get the phone. To... I'll slip my dress on. All right. Hello? Oh, it's you, Al. Huh? No, Melvin isn't here yet. But, Al, I don't want you to start a fight up here because... Uh... Oh, you don't intend to? Oh, all right. Yes, yes, I know you're being considerate. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. Jane? Yes, sir, Emma. You see, all your worries were for nothing. That was Al. Oh, wonderful. Then he isn't coming up here to start a fight. No, he said he'd start out front because there's more room to swing. <laughs> what? Oh, Irma, Irma. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I got you in a mess, but to me, it's, it's all so romantic. Romantic? Yes. Just imagine two men fighting over me. Little me, the center of attractions. <laughs> it's like two birds fighting over a worm. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, oh, Jay, my life was nothing, and now I'm suddenly become important. Two men are fighting over me savagely, furiously, like two Roman alligators. <laughs> That's gladiators. And Irma, I don't see anything romantic about it. Ooh, I do. Personally, I, I think love is too tame these days. I'd like to go back to the days of the cavemen. Oh, I suppose you'd like to be pulled across the countryside by your hair. Oh, I wouldn't mind as long as I knew that someday my husband could afford a car. <laughs> Come in. Hello, girls. Oh, Mrs. O'Reilly, you're just the person I want to see. Why, Janie, you look upset. Is there anything wrong? Everything is wrong. Irma's new boyfriend, Melvin, is coming over tonight, and Al says he's going to beat him up. Well, now, if there's anyone he listened to, it should be Irma here. Irma? She is looking forward to it. She thinks it's romantic to have men fighting over her. Oh, I know how she feels. When I was a young girl, I met two fine lads at a dance. And when it was over, they started a fight to see which one was going to take me home. The best-looking boy won, and I was very disappointed. Why? The loser had to take me home. <laughs> Don't worry, Janie. If Al starts anything tonight, I'll call the police. Oh, no, no, Mrs. Riley. Not the police, ever. Richard will be here, and right now he can't afford to be involved in any trouble. Well, I don't think there'll be any trouble. If I know Al, it's more likely he'll try to talk Melville into stepping out of the picture. He's probably figuring out an angle right now out some way to give that Melvin the work so we'll stay away from chicken. And in a case like this, there's only one man who can help me. Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Want to get rid of a rival, but don't want to get in any trouble. What is my move? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Make it look like he was hit by a truck, huh? <laughs> Yo, how, how, how do I do that? get a baseball bat and tie a license plate on the end of it. <laughs> Joe, you are a genius. Thank you and goodbye, noble friend. Well, I guess Mrs. O'Reilly was right. I was just letting my imagination get the best of me. Everything is calm and peaceful. And I can't wait for Richard to get here. Irma, of course, is anticipating Melvin with ecstasy beyond delight. Right now, she has a sunshine biscuit in her mouth and the book of knowledge on her head. That's to show Melvin she's a smart cookie. <laughs> Clever? But this I cannot understand. She has just taken a $10 bottle of Madame Cerise perfume and thrown it out the window. Irma, what's the idea? I just read in the paper that Madame Cerise got divorced. 
As the perfume didn't do her any good, how can it help me? <laughs> After all, I want to impress Melvin. Why? Why? Well, remember, he gave up his girlfriend Myrtle for me. Yes, I know all about that, but you don't have to stand by the window looking at the moon like a, a lovesick cat. Oh, but the moon fascinates me, Jane. I remember when I was a little girl, I used to say the moon was made of green cheese. <laughs> yes, I know. But we all outgrew that fairy story. Fairy story? Jane, there's a scientific explanation for it. That the moon is made of green cheese? Yes, it was once part of the Milky Way, but a big lump got loose and curdled. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Irma Einstein. Oh, please, Jane, come here and look. I've never seen the moon so beautiful. The way it's beaming down the fire escape and on the clothesline and on the steps and the street and on that man standing there with a baseball bat. A baseball bat? Let me look. Irma, that's Al. I wonder what he's doing with a baseball bat. Well, it's obvious he's lost me, so he's taking up a hobby. Oh, no. <laughs> he must be waiting for your new boyfriend, Melvin. Oh, Irma. Oh, don't open the door, Jane. Oh, be still. Uh, do, do, who, who's there? It is I. That's Richard. Anyone else would say it's me. <laughs> uh, uh, come in. Hello, girls. Well, Jane, what's wrong? You're pale. Richard, I... Uh, oh, Richard, I, I don't know how to begin. Oh, Richard. For heaven's sake, what's wrong? Didn't you see Al? He's downstairs. Well, I thought I saw someone standing in the shadows, but he didn't speak. What's going on? Al is waiting for Irma's new boyfriend with a baseball bat. Now, Richard, I, I know you don't want to be involved, this but... This is I... all I need tonight. I'd better go down and talk with him. I'm going to open the window. I want to hear what Al says. Isn't this wonderful, Jane? <laughs> oh, oh, it, it, it's, it's ecstatic. I haven't had so much fun since that day you put shellac in my hair shampoo. <laughs> Jane, I'm trying to hear what the boys are saying down there. But, Al, after all, you're a gentleman. You must take these things like a sport. I am a sport. Tonight I'm playing baseball and Melvin's head is the ball. <laughs> Root, Richard, you don't know how much I love my armor. Listen to that, Jane, he still loves me. When I see her, it's like putting my tired feet in a bucket of Epsom salts. <laughs> the sound of her voice is like the welcome sound of a siren heralding a jailbreak. <laughs> and the touch of her hand is like the delicate caress of a pickpocket's fingers. <laughs> Poetry, sheer poetry. <laughs> Jane, isn't it enough to turn any girl's head? Yes, and her stomach, too. <laughs> oh, look, Richard's coming back. Gee, I wonder what Al's going to do. Oh, I don't know, Irma, but pull down that shade. All right, but, Jane, let's hurry up and change. Change? What are you talking about? Well, the way things are shaping up, I think we should all wear sports clothes. Don't you dare move, Irma Peterson. And let me tell you one thing. If Richard breaks off with me because of this fantastic nightmare, I'll... Uh, I, oh, Richard, any luck? No, no, I pleaded with Al, but he has some silly notion about men fighting for their women. He says it's the law of the jungle, that the strong must devour the weak. Oh, my goodness. To think uh, all these years I've been going around with a cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> Gangway. Oh, what's happened? What's happened? Some crazy farmer chased me up the steps with a baseball bat. Farmer? <laughs> yeah. He kept screaming and muttering something about, I stole his chicken. <laughs> That's no farmer. That's me. What? I mean, I'm the chicken. The man with a baseball bat is my old boyfriend, Al. Oh, so that's who he is. Well, nobody's scaring me off. I like you, Irma. After all, I gave up Myrtle for you, and you're going to be mine. I'm going right back down there and fight it out with Al, man to man. Oh, Melvin, promise you'll be careful. Oh, I'm not even afraid. Don't let him hit you on the head. Re remember, you have to be at work early. <laughs> don't give it a second thought. I'm afraid of nothing. But, Irma, if you don't mind, lift the shade a little. I want to see where Al is standing so he doesn't have too much of an advantage with that baseball bat. All right. Now, let me see. Oh. Oh, what's the matter, Melvin? Melvin, you look white. Melvin, aren't you going down to face Al? No, I can't go down. We gotta stay here all night. But you said you weren't afraid of Al. Take a look. 
Myrtle's down there with him, and she's also got a baseball bat. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting? Why? I thought it was just going to be a ball game, but it's going to be a double header. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never stops forming. No, it never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent toothpaste with irium today. <laughs> was some night. I didn't get to go out with Richard, but my dress did. We put it on Melvin and Richard took him home. <laughs> As for Irma, her status is still the same. Al is still threatening, and Melvin is still afraid to come around. In fact, every time Irma has a date with Melvin, she takes along a shopping bag. Irma, what's the idea? Well, Al says he'll tear Melvin to pieces and I want something to bring him home in. <laughs> and you know, if anyone finds a missing piece, it probably came from the mind of my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard and stars Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsodent Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried is Professor Kropotkin. Gloria Gordon was heard as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. <laughs> Start the new year right by resolving to be careful when you're out driving. Remember that winter weather brings an extra hazard to the highways. So drive safely and adjust your speed to the road and the weather. Pedestrians, too, should use extra caution. Remember, accidents don't always happen to someone else. It pays to be careful. This is Wendell Nile speaking. The R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often. Because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea, with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.